Come on in. What's going on, y'all? Belinda, good morning. And well done yesterday. <laughs> Stephen Doc, go Ravens. Absolutely. Marianne, good morning. So yeah, so with some question after uh, after my photo of uh, of hockey night the other night with Caleb and all his Buffalo gear, if his uh, if his his loyalties um, for Buffalo stopped at the hockey team, and the answer is yes, of course. Um, Caleb is a fairly diehard Ravens fan, um, which is interesting because I've always spent more time thinking about hockey and baseball than football anyway. Um, you know, just kind of one of those things that you have on on Sunday that you just kind of watch. But yeah, he's pretty into it, so, and he's super nervous. He's super nervous about this game. So um, just in case this bothers anybody, in case anybody's wondering, no, we are we're fully and completely on on the uh, on the Ravens bandwagon for this. And Lamar Jackson, for all that for all that I for however much I enjoy hockey, Lamar Jackson might be the most exciting athlete I've watched in a long, long time. So he's at least good television. There's no doubt about that. And so forgive my attire this morning. Um, this morning is a this morning is a pretty healthy pig day. So it finally occurred to me because I was I was doing some scheduling this week, and I'm like looking looking, and I'm like January 21st. Something's on January 21st. What is it? Couldn't come to me. Come to me. Like oh shoot, that's Kale's birthday. I'm like holy cow, we're that close to his birthday, which means holy cow, we're that close to to uh, to having a litter of piglets. So we're about. Let's see what today is the sixteenth. So yeah, we're about we're two weeks out from uh, from her due date. So we're going over today to finish up some last uh, I guess not last minute, but some preparations. Got a couple other things to do in the barn. Um, take all of his vet supplies, get them over, get everything set. So if I look like a farmer, it's because I am um, this and uh, and so so that's where we're headed this morning. So that's why I got my cruddy hoodie on this morning, but it's still comfy. And I'm still glad that y'all are here this morning. I'm seeing y'all logging in. Thank you so much for joining in. And so I say, good grief, Sam. <laughs> and so let's get about our work today. Friends, it is, as we just said, it is January the 16th. Um, we are in the book entitled Common Prayer. And to that end, we are on page 107. Um, and we are also on the Common Prayer app and on commonprayer.net. And so whether you're joining us live, if you're joining us later today, um, however and whenever you were joining us, thank you um, for continuing in this work of prayer. Thank you for being a part of, uh, of, what, of what this has been all about um, and what the work we continue to do of sharing prayer um, for one another, for our loved ones, and simply walking daily in this journey that is spiritual formation. And so we're really grateful to have you along. And so without further ado, I'm going to invite you to quiet your hearts as we prepare to worship our Savior. And let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation.
And indeed, let us sing and shout as together we begin our prayers with the Collect for the week of January 10th. Almighty God, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us as one body with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our antiphon this morning, sustain us in the struggle, Lord, and raise us to your life. Holding this in our thoughts, we pray the words of Psalm 85, verses 1 through 4. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. In our antiphon, sustain us in the struggle, Lord, and raise us to your life. So our first reading for this morning, we continue reading the story of Noah, the back end of that story. Reading Genesis chapter 9, verses 18 through 29. The sons of Noah who went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the people of the whole earth were dispersed. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on their, both their shoulders, and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backwards and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall, shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. This is the word of the Lord. Although how it is the word of the Lord, I'm going to admit in this morning, escapes me. It seems to play some role in helping to, helping to outline the struggle that we are going to see between sort of these descendants of Noah, these people of the covenant, and what this passage identifies as sort of the descendants of Canaan. It's, it's setting up this, this tension that goes all the way back to Noah. Um, but this this story and, and what it's intended to symbolize and where the offense really is and all that kind of stuff doesn't make a ton of sense to me this morning. Um, and so we can go back and look at that. Um, and I think it's okay to say, ah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, and there's, there's certainly some research that we can do to discover that. Um, 
But suffice it to say, it's setting us up for the stories that will come ahead, and it in that way, it is certainly clear. And our second reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision count for anything, but only faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view. And the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. This is the word of the Lord. Such prescient and important words as we discuss um, as a country the very nature of what freedom is and how it is to function. Yes, freedom is a beautiful thing and it's and it and the freedom that we understand in this country is predated by millennia, um, by the freedom that the early Christians um, and others um, proclaimed. Um, but it comes down to do not use your freedom as an opportunity to serve yourself, but rather do it, use it to serve others. Because the whole law is encapsulated in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that indeed is a word for us, not just for you and me, but for us all in these times. And to our antiphon, sustain us in the struggle, Lord, and raise us to your life. Today in our readings, we return to an old friend, uh, El Salvador's Arch Archbishop Oscar Romeo, Romero. Um, and today is a celebration in El Salvador, and you can read about it in the introduction to today's uh, readings. Um, but we read El Salvador's um, assassinated Archbishop Oscar Romero, who said, I have frequently been threatened with death. I must say that, as a Christian, I do not believe in death, but in the resurrection. If they kill me, I shall rise again in the Salvadorian people. Martyrdom is a great gift from God that I do not believe I have earned. But if God accepts the sacrifice of my life, then my blood will be like the seed of liberty and a sign of the hope that will soon become a reality. I do not believe in death, but, res but in the resurrection.
And so, friends, we turn to our prayer list for today. And uh, again, it's on my laptop. I um, haven't had the chance to print it off for Sunday. I mean, we have a single edition. Um, Michelle did get in touch with me and asked me to put uh, her mom, Doris Bortner, back on the prayer list. Um, as of late Friday evening, she was diagnosed with pneumonia. Um, and so we certainly hold Doris in our prayers. Um, Michelle, as she attempts to uh, as she attempts to provide care as best she can, um, we simply pray for everyone and ask that this pneumonia would clear. And so holding that in our hearts, let us pray. Lord, there's a lot of talk of going free, going around about freedom. It's a word that seems to be on our lips every day. And truth be told, it's not always clear what we mean when we say that. What is freedom? How does freedom work? Where does freedom, how do freedom and responsibility work together? How do we negotiate between my freedom and my neighbor's freedom? And Lord, it seems that we as a country are not all that skilled in trying to figure out what freedom is all about. Lord, our freedom has made us angry. It has made us belligerent at times. It has caused us caused strife between people of goodwill. But this notion is not entirely clear to us. But Lord, it certainly seemed clear to Paul. Paul seemed to understand what he meant. And though we've read these words so many times, but we still struggle to understand their meaning and know how to apply them in our lives, particularly in our climate. What does it mean that for, for freedom Christ has set us free? What does it mean that we should not use our freedom as an opportunity to indulge ourselves? What does it mean that all the law is wrapped up in a single phrase, you shall love your neighbor as yourself? So we would admit that these conversations can perhaps make us nervous because we're wondering, well, where is this going to take us? But Lord, nevertheless, we want to be obedient to your word. So Lord, help us to understand what freedom's all about. Help us to think about our freedom in a way that serves one another. Lord, that is always building up the beloved community, never just building up ourselves. And Lord, help us to be a people that understand all the more, day by day, what it means to love our neighbors as ourselves. So Lord, we'll make no grand pronouncements about what we ought to do or what not to do. We simply open our hearts in inquiry and ask that you would come and that you would help us to understand. Lord, may we be surprised and may we be energized by that which we discover. Lord, part of the reason that we struggle with sickness, illness, and difficult circumstances is because, yes, indeed, they seem like a, like a hint, like a, like a limiter on our freedom. When we're struggling in our bodies or in our minds or in our spirits, we, we feel that pressing down. We feel what it's like to be bound by our very selves. And so we would pray for those who are on our list, who are seeking freedom from that which ails them whether it be an illness or a situation in their life. Lord, we ask that you would bless and keep those who find themselves on our list this day. We pray especially for Doris Bordner, and we lift her up, Lord, and we're sorry to hear of her pneumonia diagnosis. And we pray that she would receive, continue to receive excellent care and that this pneumonia would clear fairly quickly. And so we lift her up. Pray also for Michelle as she offers care and for all who love Doris, Lord. Would you help us? to take good care of her. We also pray before the throne of grace those who are wrestling with other ailments of their own variety. And so we pray for Dave Cunningham, Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Ann Wilson, Perry Lyons, Jeremy Dutterer, Alan Showalter, Sandy Suit, Savannah Price, Karen Anderson, Cart Denner, an unspoken request, Carolyn Yost, Baby Lacey, Gene Snyder, David Miller, Margie Snyder, an unspoken request, 
Richard and Deborah Hahn, Steve Moorhead, Joe Zentgraf, Terry Shavius, Jean Alexander, Jennifer Ramsey, for Caitlin, Richard and Beatrice Hess, Linda Mayo, an unspoken request, Donna Rill, Marcia Brown, Betty Heath, Laurie Posey, John Cunningham, Artis Tully, Richard Lindsay, Bruce Ludlow, Bob Scott, Helen McQuay, the family of Evelyn Schaefer, LaRue Newsbaum, for Butch McCotter, the family of Tom Kurtz, Easter Dorsey, Debbie Hahn, Kathy and Dave Stebbins, the family of Jay Boyd, and the family of Robert Cassily, Laura Hess, Paul Sullivan, the family of Sherry Armstrong, for BJ and for Sam, and for Darlene Hayes. Hear all of our prayers, O Lord. Hear our desire that you might intervene in our loved ones' lives in a way that gives them life. Hear also the prayers that we offer wherever we may be in the silence of our hearts. Hear us as we pray. And together we pray in the words of our Savior, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, as humans, we are always moving closer to death. Each morning is a reminder that our lives are fleeting gifts. But as your children, we are also always moving towards life. May this morning remind us that we are one day closer to the life that lasts forever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen indeed. Still can't believe a dozen of you show up on seven, at 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning um, to hang out and to pray. But thank you so much for doing so. It's a joy to have each of you this morning. A joy to see the ways that you offer prayers for one another, even as I'm leading prayer here. Um, just, y'all, it's just... It's a great way to start the day. And thank you so very, very much for being here. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Um, and we're going to be starting a little bit of a sermon series. I'm kind of excited about it. Um, so invite you to be with us at 1030 um, for worship. We're also going to be using our new camera system. And so I'm excited about that as well. So come check us out. Give us some feedback. Help us make it better. But there's a lot going on tomorrow morning and hope you can make it. Until then, peace and good, y'all.